This recital blew my mind. What's going on? It's Jason Heath, and I had the pleasure of attending the 2023 Pittsburgh Double Bass Symposium. I've covered this event in the past on the channel. It's always inspiring. I was so moved by the playing of Brett Shirtliff, who is the associate principal bassist of the Buffalo Philharmonic. I've had him on my podcast, and I'm just going to present this whole recital here. If you want to check out everything else that happened at the Pittsburgh Double Bass Symposium, we've got that linked up in the description below, and I really hope you enjoy this moving performance from one of my favorite people in the bass world. Thank you. 
stay here. It's just too much work. <laughs> so uh, I, I think you all get the improvised, the prepared improvisation now. I mean, I prepared it a little bit, but yeah. So <laughs> I, I saw everyone after I finished, you're all like, I should move the stand. A pencil, don't let it fall in the F hole, on the string. Right, ah, nice, like a, like a sizzle cymbal. Super fun. Okay. Absolutely no musical value whatsoever, but that's going to be the gist of this entire recital. <laughs> that's a joke. You can laugh. Okay, so the second piece was a real piece of music, though, uh, by Edward Nanny. Of course, we all know his, his wonderful methods, um, but he has a lot of fantastic solo literature, and this is where I have a shameless plug. Uh, at the ISB convention in June, I'll be paying, playing an entire recital of Nanny's solo literature. Uh, of which I'll be playing Miss Caprice, uh, among a concerto, uh, Russian fantasy, a tarantella, really cool stuff. Um, sort of the French Botticini, if you will. Um, yeah, that seems good for now. Um, yeah, there we go. Uh, the next piece. I sort of got a, into looping uh, some years back, so this is the process of recording your sound and then immediately it plays it back on a loop and you can play over top of it or record more over top of it and sort of stack a bunch of sounds. Um, and I, I was down in rural Texas um, and I, was, I had scheduled myself a, a classical bass recital at a bar in rural Texas. And you're allowed to laugh at that too, it was an absurd idea. Um, and, and so I wanted to have something other than, I was playing like um, failing and some Rabach pieces and a cello suite and, and uh, I wanted something that was a little more accessible perhaps than a cello suite. And uh, uh, so I was sort of messing around with my looper trying to find some things and you find some grooves and I found that one of these grooves that I had hit sort of worked perfectly with the tune Shenandoah. And this was sort of the first piece that I ever created using this technology and it's sort of one of my favorites. Uh, so here it is, the Shenandoah loop.
our shameless plug number two. Uh, that'll be out, <laughs> it's one of the tracks on an upcoming uh, album I'll be releasing that's been in the works for a long time through our orchestra's record label, Beflouve. There are no buffalo in Buffalo. <laughs> it's named after the French beautiful water, is that right, Beflouve? Yeah, yeah. Don't ask me, there's just no buffalo. But you can buffalo, 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 buffalo. Yeah, okay, somebody knows that. Okay. <laughs> uh, this, we go from my oldest loop piece to the one that I finished like yesterday. So, um, hope you enjoy some piazzolta. Joel, before we came in, he was like, oh, yeah, I know Max. 
never met anyone else that knows Max Richter. Um, okay, one hand, great. Um, so he's mainly Hollywood composer, uh, has written for, uh, the first time I sort of recognized him was in a movie, Shutter Island, Leonardo DiCaprio, super creepy weirdo movie. Um, but he really hit this like bizarre ethereal vibe um, and his music is sort of, I would say, if you know, sort of like Arvo Part in a way. Uh, it's very atmospheric. Um, I heard this piece for the first time in the car on the way home from work, and it was one of those things where, like, I immediately was like, Voop! just turned up the radio and, like, pulled into the garage, carbon monoxide poisoning be damned. I'm gonna finish the end of this, you know, listen all the way to the end until they told me who it was, and it was just like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. So Hilary Hahn commissioned him to write this. She commissioned uh, a set of encores, uh, and this was one of them, and I, I would say one of the better ones for sure. Um, it's for violin and piano. <laughs> so my first thought was, well, this will be easy. I'll just sort of figure out what key it works in the bass, bass and piano. Um, but I had an upcoming show uh, to play, and I thought, well, why not just, the piano part's pretty easy, if you'd imagine. It's just sort of like block chords, pretty easy voicing. So I played the voicing into here, um, which was a bit of a task. Uh, I don't use any editing or anything on these. These are all just sort of live loops. I can erase them if I don't like them, which happens a lot. Um, but then you sort of leave and it sticks. So this is uh, Max Richter's uh, Mercy. It touched me not only because of the music, but uh, uh, the message is, my God, we all need a little more mercy in our lives.
She goes, because it uses Bulgarian melodies that I recognize. She goes, who wrote it? And I said, Emil Tebikov. She goes, ah, oh, he's a famous conductor. So it's a fantastic piece written in 79, 1979. Uh, it's just a great piece. Um, so check it out. Um, so uh, I spent a lot of time, <laughs> spent a lot of time in this magical place that I call rural Texas at the Round Top Festival. Um, wasting time <laughs> practicing in my studio with, with this stuff. And uh, uh, one, one night when I was there years ago, it was, you know, <clears throat> I am in the morning or something. And um, it was super sultry and the air conditioning was like barely cutting it inside. But if you were really quiet, you could hear all the sounds. Uh, we're in the middle of the woods, so you can hear all these sounds at night, these animals. Uh, incredibly peaceful uh, when the air conditioning isn't working. Um, and uh, this tune sort of came out, and it's funny, um, it's, uh, it's sort of melded with a favorite tune of mine, Pablo Casal's song, uh, song of the Birds. Uh, it's a folk song earlier than him, of course, but um, this seemed to be appropriate for that setting, and uh, so late night blue for uh, night birds.
So like I said, um, I, well, I didn't say this. Like I said it, I'm uh, up in Buffalo. Um, yes, it snows a lot. Uh, yes, people like hockey. If you have any other questions, feel free. Um, I have, uh, in the orchestra, uh, we're about 80 years old or some such thing. And uh, we are, we just hired our third tubist ever. Um, and yeah, I know. Um, and the second one who was there when, when, I, when I joined, uh, Don Harry, uh, is a teacher at Eastman School of Music. I mean, an absolute legend. Um, very interesting guy. Wonderful musician, very interesting guy. People that know him are smiling. Um, so Don, my first week on the job, um, it's very serious, we're playing, uh, oh my gosh, I don't even know, Don Quixote, Strauss. And you know, I'm, I'm really trying to do my best, and, and, and during a pause in the action, conductor sitting with the violence, I hear this sound coming from through the tuba, and it goes, attention bases, attention bases, stop rushing. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, <laughs> What's going on, guys? Like, oh, that's just Don. It's no big deal. Don't, don't worry. Um, but he would at sometimes give us announcements through his tuba, and sometimes they were helpful, and sometimes they were nonsensical. Um, sometimes he would play with a hand puppet to the trombone section while they were. Um, and sometimes, which was the best thing ever, he would throat sing through his tuba. And that was fantastic. It was usually in the key of whatever the violins were working on. Uh, so it was very subtle, like a didgeridoo. So, um, that was a treat. Anyway, so uh, you know, now that Don has, has retired, uh, someone has to take up the mantle. And, and I have a very long commute in the morning into work. And you can only listen to so many podcasts and Beethoven cycles um, before you start to go a little crazy and start trying to learn the throat sing yourself. So this is my homage to Don, the Tuvan commuter. Thank you. 
No more throat sing, I promise. <laughs> um, this next one I wrote in 2014, uh, I remember very specifically, because uh, it was about a month after one of my best friends passed away, incredibly unexpectedly. Um, uh, she was a, a violist in the Syracuse Symphony, a friend of mine from, from college. She sort of married my best friend. Um, and when I came to grad school here at Duquesne, we talked them into moving down the street from us. Uh, and we did all the gigs here together and Wheeling and Westmoreland and all that sort of stuff. Um, uh, and then when I went to Buffalo, they went up to Rochester, so we stayed very close. Um, and. When you're going through something like that, and you know, and you're working through all of those things, um, as musicians, what do we do? We we play music, and uh, so I, I couldn't sort of sit around anymore, and I went into practice, but couldn't focus on anything, obviously, and um, just sort of started messing around with with things to meditate, basically, and um, and this sort of popped out um, unexpectedly, um, but not expected. <laughs> Not surprisingly, uh, because uh, Chrissy was a bridesmaid in our wedding where this hymn was played, and it was also played at her funeral. So, this is my hymn for Chrissy.
So, uh, this is the end of my portion of the day. I want to start out by thanking Micah Howard for this fantastic event. Um, this is a really special place. Uh, like I said, I came to graduate school here in, in 2003 or something. And, and without the community of bases here in Pittsburgh, I, I wouldn't be who I am. Uh, I was able to play for Micah and Jeff and Peter uh, and Jeff. I mean, and just get feedback uh, in these unegoed places that was um, magical. And a place like this is a really special place, and this community doesn't happen everywhere. Uh, so you should be very proud of what happens here uh, and enjoy it. So thank you for having me, uh, and I'll see you all soon.